Let's go back to Tan. Tan says, so circumcision is a command given in Torah. That's true, it is. Yet the New Testament says that if anyone came to the faith in Jesus, and then he references, and this is interesting as well, the references here are, are interesting. 1 Corinthians 7.18, they are not to seek for circumcision. Okay. Oh, I wonder what translation, yeah, it, it means let's, they shouldn't let's, convert to become part of the yeah, it means don't convert to. Let's let's mean, stop here because the interesting thing is is that I use this passage, the First Corinthians seven eighteen passage. I use this passage to uphold Torah observance by Christians. So let me move this over here so that I'm not looking down. Let's get some context here, and uh, he's talking about husbands and wives, so on and so forth. Yet if the unbelieving one leaves, let him leave. The brother or the sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. By the way, he's talking case law here. Paul is talking about the laws of Torah. He's talking about Torah for the believer. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? Only as the Lord has assigned to each one, as God has called each, in this manner let him walk. And so I direct in all the churches." Was any man called when he was already circumcised? Now, there's translation issues here, but was any, uh, was any man called circumcised? He is not to become uncircumcised. Has anyone been called in uncircumcision? He is not to be uncircumcised. Now, check this out. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But what matters is keeping the commandments of God. So the question that I would have for Tan in this specific passage, which he referenced is, as you have already noted, circumcision is a command in the Torah. So how can Paul say circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, but what matters is keeping the commands of God? Isn't circumcision one of the commands of God? Yeah, yeah. And, and then verse 20, each man must remain in the condition in which he was called. It, that doesn't mean if you were a pagan, stay a pagan. Exactly. If you yes. were, uh, if you were a, uh, I don't know, what was the funny Messiah uh, or the mystery Bible theater? If you were into Egyptian mysteries or a Tibetan Buddhism, yeah, I see, I see, that, I see. If you were I called this, there, stay there. I see this stay guy there. coming and being like, "Hello, um, hello, my, uh, my name's Jonah, and uh, I, I believe I, I've been in the cult of Mithra." And then Paul's like, "You know what? Stay there." You need yeah. to stay How can there. You, so back to verse 17, let it, let him walk in the calling. What does walk mean throughout the Bible? Walk is walking in the Torah. <laughs> yes. Walking is, the what is yes. it? Psalm 119 begins. What are those who walk in, in the Torah? The idea of walking, what it means is that you're learning of an application of the Torah comes from your new creation life at, in as faith birthed from above in Messiah Yeshua. And to not be uh, bullied, allow yourself to be bullied or coerced, that you need to join some Jewish sect in order to be acceptable because they're going to be telling you that the Torah does not apply to you. Because they're going to they're going to make you feel like an outsider. They're going to make you feel like you don't belong. Like salvation's not for you because unless you join their group, you're not even on God's plan. And Paul is absolutely vigil, hyper vigilant to protect new believers from among the nations from those it's, kinds of poisonous yes. sectarian claims yes. to try to manipulate and coerce people into their club. And and we see it in the, it's already happening with Yeshua with the whole hand washing, right? Right. You have Jew, Jews judging other Jews. Well, you you're not included. You're you're not hand washing your hands the right. You're not fasting on the right days. Like if if Jews are doing to that to other Jews, what what do you think they were doing to Gentiles? They're saying, "Look, you got to do a backflip. You got to do three somersaults. You got to wait a year, come back. We got to test you. We're going to inspect your house for how you wash your pots. You I might mean, have to it, it, divorce your wife." <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, exactly. And so and to clarify 18, you're correct, Caleb, that this is about translation. If a man was called who had already, the Greek is a unique uh, construction here, and I know it looks simple in the English, but basically it means if you 
came to faith in Yeshua and you had already become a member of one of these sectarian groups. Yes, you have to leave. You can't still be in that sectarian group, but it's a, but it but it doesn't. It says don't the word unsurpassed. It says don't stretch your foreskin. That's Yikes. the actual. They called it epispasm, <laughs> right? It actually said it's Ooh. telling that person. It's like look, because they're going wow. Well, I was physically circumcised, but I did it under the guise of joining this sectarian group, and now I've come to faith in Messiah. What do I do? Paul's like, okay. Yeah, don't don't do what these other Jews had done in the time of the Maccabees, which was try to remove this mark. He's he's like saying, actually, you know, you got to retain. Yeah, this is a mark of the covenant, so it's we're going to accept that as valid. But yeah, you're no longer part of that sectarian group. You're you you know you're going to learn what it means to be a disciple of Yeshua. Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications, and we'll see you in the next video.